My name is Matt Jones. I'll be your professor for the next few minutes. Conditional discrete random variables. Let's say you have a couple of discrete random variables, x and y. Now, given their marginal and joint probability mass functions, these guys, that is, all this is is this just represents the probability that the random variable x takes on the value of little x and the probability that the random variable y takes on the value of little y. Uh, for example, if uh, you know, with our favorite little example about balls, if if red equals if r equals one, you know, r equals one and y equals zero, one zero, one zero, one zero, this function would evaluate to uh, twelve over eighty four. Okay, so it's given this joint probability mass function and the marginals, the marginals, okay? Remember the marginal probability mass function for x is exactly the same as the probability mass function for x. When we use the word marginal, we're just sort of tipping our hat to the fact that there is probably another random variable out there. So for example, the marginal probability of, uh, of uh, red being uh, zero, that is, uh, what's the chance that red takes on the value of zero is this, 35 out of 84, okay? Uh, probability that red takes on the value of one, 42 out of 84, okay? Remember that? So, so given these three functions here, then the conditional probability mass function for x given y is defined this way. Hey, we've seen this before, right? This just, this just follows from the, the, by the definition of conditional probability, right? That just follows by the definition of conditional probability. And now, um, it, of course, another way to write that now using our uh, notation here with, with joints and marginals, we can write that as P of X and Y of X and Y over P of uh, sub Y of little y, okay? Where, of course, um, the probability that y takes on the value of little y uh, can't be zero, okay? If it's equal to zero, then we have to do something else. That's subject for another course. All right, so, uh, or at least for now. Um, note, while we're, while we're looking at these, that, uh, that, that, that the numerator here is actually a function of little x and little y, right? And the denominator is a function of little y. This whole thing is a function of x and y. Okay, so I can actually, you can change these values, right? If I set y to be, uh, I don't know, 2, then I can talk about the probability that x equals uh, 0 or 1 or 5 or 19 or whatever. If I set y equal to 10, then I can talk about the, the new chance that x takes on certain values, okay? So this is, this is important. This is actually a function of both x and y, okay? Uh, let's take a take a look at uh, our balls example here. Um, what's the what, what's the probability that um, you know if uh, uh, what's the probability that r equals zero given y equals one? Okay. Uh, another way to write that in just a, in our new notation here is the p sub r and y. Um, of uh, zero, uh, one, I guess. Oops, sorry, it's so sloppy. Um, this is same as uh, p of r and y of zero and one, comma, right? This is the given sign, this is the comma. This is over the uh, p sub y of one, right? Probability that uh, the red is one and yellow, or the, the red is zero and yellow is one, is uh, da, 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 red is zero, yellow is one. 18 out of 84, yellow. By yellow, I mean white. Goodness. 18 out of 84. Okay, I should change this to white. Gosh, I hope nobody's watching this. Okay. What's the probability that the white is one? Here I have to look at the, the, the marginal, right? What's the probability that the white one is a one? It's right here, right? 45 out of 84. 45 out of 84. So that just turns out to be um, 18 out of 
45. Okay. Um, let's see. Does that reduce? I think so. Uh, 3 goes into 18 6 times. 3 goes into 45 uh, 15 times. Or uh, what is that? 2 fifths? Very good. 2 fifths. Um, maybe there's another way to look at that. Um, maybe we could just sort of think about the, the picture. You know, given that the white one is a 1, what's the chance that the red one is 0? Given that the white one is a 1, so given that we're sort of here, what's the chance that the red one is 0? It ought to be 18 divided by 45. Get it? The total probability here is, you know, whatever that is, you've got, you've got sum these up and then renormalize so that it's so it's 1. So you can sort of think of like the, the sum of the parts here, you could sort of think of is uh, 18 plus 24 is 42 plus 3 is 45. 45. Just take 20, uh, uh, just take uh, 18 divided by 45, right? You get the same thing, but that's exactly what we're doing there by the formula. Okay, so okay, so now the the conditional cumulative distribution function of x given y is gosh, what does that even mean? Okay, here's what I think it ought to mean. If I set y, if I say the the random variable y is observed to be this right here, little y, then I want to be talking about the CDF of x. That is. It should be, this, this needs to be the chance that given y takes on the value of little y, that big X takes on a value less or equal to little x. Yeah, okay. So that makes sense. See, um, these uh, conditional random variables, or these conditional distributions, are, are distributions too, okay? Um, we're just setting y equal to this. Now x behaves a certain way. And you can calculate this. This follows by... Um, our probability axioms, but just applied to condition in the conditional sense, it's the chance that x takes on the value of, say, uh, I don't know, little k, given that y equals y, um, for all values of k uh, less than or equal to x. Okay, and this is if um, x is discrete when um, this is if x is discrete when y takes on the value of little y, okay? And in this case, in this case, the marginal CDF of x is, and what do we mean by marginal CDF? Uh, we just mean the CDF, okay? Again, the word marginal there just means that we know that there's another random variable lying around somewhere. It's this. It's just the CDF. But I can write this as, let's see, I think I could, um, you know what, do you remember this thing called the law of total probability? Law of total probability says that I can write this thing as the sum of, um, let's see, that x is less than or equal to, whoops, not y, x, okay. Uh, given, what I'm going to do here is I can condition on anything, right? I can condition on anything in the world here. I'm going to condition on um, that other random variable that I know is lying around because that's convenient, times the probability that y equals y, right? Remember that? Okay. Now, um, with our new notation, though, uh, maybe a, uh, another way to, to express that would be the sum over y of f sub x given y of x uh, given y, like this, times the marginal PMF of the random variable y. Okay, It's just simply because this is uh, arguably a, a shorter way to write that. Okay, that's all it is. Okay, and this is this is this means this. Okay. All right. 